Are you a car enthusiast or a do-it-yourself mechanic? Boy, do I have a deal for you. I have found a place that believes in what I believe in. They stand for conservative values. They don't go after that woke agenda. Plus, they have the best prices in auto parts. Get your parts where I get them. Kane Auto Supply. No more running around town trying to find the right parts. They're on their way to me. Why wait? Get your auto parts shipped directly to you. Fastest and the best prices. Kane Auto Supply. A proud sponsor of the Get Over It podcast. We were called to be disciples, not Christians. And disciples is a discipline, and discipline is hard, and it's why most people in America are Christian. They're churchgoers. And I couldn't. This stuff would come out of my mouth. i go, why don't you just shut up and be funny, man? What's wrong with you? <laughs> and God made it clear, and it, because I've given you a prophetic anointing, mm. it just simply means to say hard things. The Bible says that. Some people are prophets, and some are preachers, and some are teachers. That's all it is. You're saying a hard thing that others aren't saying. It's a different style of delivery system than a pastor. Couldn't do that. I'd shoot them all. I don't see you as a... I'd be a congregation of one guy. I don't know that I want you coming to visit me when I'm in the hospital. No. I don't don't think I want... I would. I'd just say, get it over with. There's people here that could use that bed. Comedian Mickey Bell, Get Over It Podcast. We're ready to go for another episode. Listen, do me a favor. Like, comment, share. You got it? Like, comment, share. I have got a guest today that, well, let me just say this. I hope we make it out alive. He's a comedian. He's a prophetic speaker. This is about to get interesting. Join me right now as we welcome in Brad Stein. Brad Stein is in the studio. Quit yelling at me. I'm telling you, man. What the heck? You got me so fired up. I watch you on social media doing all this walking. All this walking that you're Uh, doing. What's what's up with that? I specifically said, if you're going to put me on social, I don't want anybody watching. Yeah. So uh, it's gone haywire. You're going to have to get off social now. This guy is ridiculous. You're walking. What are you walking for? I don't know. What makes you get up? What a walk. I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to leave. I'm looking for an exit. (laughs) There's nowhere to go. I'm in a cul-de-sac. I keep walking in circles. Yeah, it's sociopathic. It's (laughs) issues. I'm looking for Vivant. Something. Something. Just something to to get you going. Mm. How you been doing? Well, how have I been doing what? Just living. Just making it. uh, I'm making it. And by the by the grace of God, I guess is why I'm going (laughs) and living. Because we don't get to make those choices. We kind of make it and then we don't. And uh, we live by reactions, right? What's that? We live by reaction. I think so. Well, we or or we can be controlled by our reactions Mm -hmm. unless we control them. That's the only thing you can control is your is how you respond, not what's going to happen. That you don't get any call in. Yeah. But you certainly can and decide how you're going to respond to things. And that's the hard discipline of life, isn't it? Exactly. Is to not be controlled by emotions. It's very difficult. That's That's why I decided not to be a woman. (laughs) Among other things. Well, because they're controlled more by emotions. Okay, but listen to this, though. Please. If you become a woman, scientific fact, you're going to live five years longer. Really? 20,000 words a day. Oh. And the moment you become a woman, you're never wrong about anything else the rest of your life. That's true. I mean... Well, yeah, but they live five years longer, but then they reduce men's yes. life by five years. So I think there's a trade-off. Is there? Yeah. Well, I can see why men would want to become a woman. I don't know why a woman would want to become a man. I don't, I don't either. Know. I don't either. It's too hard. It's so difficult. the moment they become a man, do they all of a sudden leave the lid up in the restroom? I would restroom? hope so. I mean, you would think so. I would hope they'd make it easy. If you're going to complain. Crying out loud, a bunch of whiners. <laughs> God almighty, I fell in the toilet. Well, that's why you got a it's, neck. Yes. <laughs> Turn around, see if there's a chair. Where else in your life yes. do you go to sit down but don't make sure there's Absolutely. a chair to accept yeah. your I know we're end. supposed to live by faith, but not that kind of faith. No. See, that's why God been meant to help women know how to sit and not end exactly. up in the toilet. Because if it wasn't for us. We would think they wouldn't exist. And they wouldn't. Well. So take me back to your childhood. Where did you grow I'll up? you back so this is gonna be therapeutic is it <laughs> i've oh, got a couch we're gonna put you on here yes. in a second uh, then i'll send you a bill all right so start over say it again your childhood what where about did it? you wh- where did you grow up um, uh, what does that mean as far as your childhood where'd you go to school what okay. city well area? i mean it varied i moved okay. uh i was born okay in uh bremen 
Indiana. Okay. So I'm a Hoosier. And then at nine, I moved to Southern California. Wow. And then 23 years ago, I moved to Nashville, Tennessee. So I have lived in the South, the Midwest, and the West Coast, but never on the East Coast. Which one do you like the best? Well, um, I would say Tennessee, maybe. Okay. Since yeah. you're still here? Yeah. I, I mean, think that's uh, just for what I wanted. I mean, look, here's what I always tell people. I've been in all 50 states. I said, you know, if I had to choose, if somebody says, what's the best state? If you could only have one, mm -hmm. pound for pound, what provides the most options in all directions uh, per state? Uh, it's it's hands down California, mm -hmm. the best state. There is no question about what it offers. Right. It has Hollywood. Nobody else has that. It has San Francisco, which used to be a cosmopolitan destination. Not now. <laughs> Speaking about putting the seat down, they don't even have one. But uh, they don't even flush it. They anymore. also have ba you know they have Bakersfield and Fresno. So if you want, if you like the country, they got it. You want the ocean, we got it. You want mm -hmm. uh, skiing, and you know uh, we got. It. You want fresh late skiing, we got that. You want a desert, we got one of those. There's you want the best year round weather. There's nothing like California. You have to be a special brand of idiot to ruin California. And well, <laughs> voila! <laughs> Look what we did. We found more than so, one. Yeah, so um, so my point is this, though. You know, it is. It's an amazing state. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 it makes the point in spades that ideas have consequences. Mm -hmm. Philosophies, ideologies, when implemented into real time, actually have consequences. Good or bad, depending on the presupposition. So that uh, uh, is kind of my long answer to uh, which one is best, is that was the best. But as a traveling guy, you say you travel. Mm -hmm. It's better to be in the middle yeah, than to be on one end or the other. So that's kind of the answer. Kind of works that way on a cruise ship, too. I think so. Safer safer in the middle. I think. Not as much not rocking. Yes. You kind of get I've it. only done one cruise ship. Really? Uh, in my entire life. It How was have you last... stayed off the cruise ships? Uh, well, because I wasn't retirement age yet. Okay. And um, I wanted a career. <laughs> That's a good reason. Yeah. That's a, yeah. So, you like uh, getting paid. Yeah. Um, no, it's funny because I had done virtually every possible venue you can do. But cruise ships, of course, is part of what many comics have done over the years. And I've known guys that have done it. And they pay well, I guess. And you if they like you, you can kind of stay on and just mm -hmm. make money hand over fist. And if you're smart and don't spend it, yeah. you could save a lot of money. But you're, it's not a career maker. You're right. not, it's, it's just, you know, it's like Vegas or something being a showgirl. It's like you make money and people see you, but there's no, no, there's no career yeah, <laughs> advancement to that. So anyways, uh, but needless to say, somebody gave me a chance to do a wedding crew, like a, a ministry thing, like a marriage thing. Okay. And somebody asked me to be on it, and so I did. And it was a blast. I mean, it's amazing. They had, gave us a nice room, so I kind of opened the sliding door, and I could hear the ocean, and I left it open for a week. <laughs> Never shut it. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just ate more ice cream than I'd ever eaten in exactly. my life. It was Christian conservative type folks, mm -hmm. so it's my constituency. So obviously the crowds are just amazing. So it was fun, yeah. Uh, and got to see some ports of call and whatever. And so in that regard, it was an interesting experience. And I would do it again, but I wouldn't want to do it on a regular basis because I think if you do it as a actual uh, onboard uh, entity, I don't think they give you very good uh, rooms. I think it's pretty. Yeah, much I, low I don't budget. think. I don't think you're. You're in the suites. Yeah, you don't get the, with the sliding, sliding door. No, no, no. You sliding don't get, a, you don't get a window. Yeah, sliding door's think. not included. Yeah. You're down so, in the bottom. Right. Yes. It's not, right. They used to call them a dungeon, I think, in the old days, and now they're called the cruise room. Right. But anyways, <laughs> um, so yeah, that was my experience with the cruise. I did some research on you. I wish you had. I know. You know Somebody, I, I said to him, I don't want any research. Y yes. I don't want a dossier. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything. So I, I feel like I'm being stalked again. I did it. I did CIA. it. That's what happens with social media. I know that you uh, had to go through a time you as know. a child. Well, according and if you got this from Wikipedia, there I did. is no no. Well, we don't know who okay. wrote that. I didn't. Let me quote Wikipedia in uh -huh. saying that as a child, you went through a time where your parents divorced. 
Right. How was that as a kid, and how, oh, how did that affect you? I really <laughs> recommend it to everybody. If if you're a, a, a if you got a bunch of kids, you've been married a long I time. Get divorced. Two Christmases, the kids, yeah, two the birthdays. Kids it's are, wonderful. Are, are like you know, it's too stable, it's too loving, <laughs> too comfortable. I feel too much at home. I feel safe. We don't want any of that. No. Not in this day and age. Uh, well, of course, it was uh, miserable. It was uh, 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 it was everything it's not supposed to be in a in a life for a child uh, is. Remember, parents are the first god you know. Mm -hmm. They are your stability. They feed you. They take care of you. They are your safety. They are god to you. You don't know. You don't have any sense of the transcendent, any sense of of that saint outside of the material world. So this is uh, everything to you. And so it becomes, and there's a spiritual dimension to it, to your parents. You know, you're connected to them in a deeper way, but they made you from whole cloth. I mean, they literally pro Whether they prepared for it or not. Yeah, whether they meant to. Yeah, yeah, who knows? We don't know happened. if they meant to make you. Yeah, exactly. But it was a great but concert. Nevertheless, uh, here I am. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I hope you had a good time. Exactly. Because exactly. you left me with yeah. the, all the, 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 Thanks, uh, Dad. the shrapnel. <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, so yeah, it was, you know, it, was a, it was a very difficult, very uh, terrible uh, cons uh, thing. And then, of course, you end up having to choose a parent oftentimes, which is completely ridiculous for a kid to be put in that position. So yeah, a lot of pain, a lot of distress, uh, always there. That wound um, will never go away. Now, hopefully you'll get some healing. Hopefully you'll get, but but healing wound is still a scar. Yeah. So it's not in perfect uh, proportion as it was designed to be. So in that regard, you know, and I thought I'd gotten over it and then you had to bring it up oh, again. I'm sorry. So, you know, this is really. Well, I'm just exposing the I, fact that you've still not dealt with it. You still again, not please. have dealt with it, Brad. For God's still sake. Still haven't dealt with it. So how. No, sorry, you... Lord. <laughs> I <laughs> told you I wouldn't go back into the dark spot, but he and threw here me we in are. there. I'm just being used by God. No, I'm just right. taking to the mission field maybe so tell sure me. you're not lds no okay just want to make sure i haven't been told yet but okay. hold on a second no okay. nothing from nancy okay um you You'd got richer though you'd have more money <laughs> i'll <laughs> tell you that exactly and i'd be in california amen you got into comedy and it said something about the fact that you did stunts sideshow stunts it said oh. that you would do did you do magic? What what was it? You did comedy. So stunts. this is a, a, a probing interview. Stunts. This is deep stunts. This I'm is like, what? Stuff. I mean, as a comedian myself, just getting started, I thought I'm gonna have Brad Stern come in here. He's gonna just elevate my career. He's gonna help me. He's gonna give me. Yeah, some that's knowledge. why I'm here on this earth to make sure your career <laughs> exactly is fully. Uh, Thank you, God. Uh, <laughs> established. Uh well stunts uh, what what stunts, stunts I don't really did... know where that came from so again it's not like a Wikipedia nonsense <laughs> stunts. I didn't write my Wikipedia does anybody ever write their own Wikipedia I, have I don't no know how I don't even have a Wikipedia oh so. you don't okay well I'll get you one oh, thank now you. that I've been on the podcast I'm sure somebody will write you one yes up. everybody my job there is are to people sure right now life. elevation they're writing it right now let's say I think that uh, I it's funny because I was just I have my own believe it or not my own little podcast oh, yeah and come to find out there's only two people left on earth who don't don't have a podcast exactly uh but uh i uh, uh was just talking to my son because i made a, a, a reference to my my magic like my sleight of hand time and I, I go why did i tell you i was a professional magician he said you were professional everything <laughs> because i was i i don't i you literally ha i don't know if you if the, you're in the same boat but like sometimes i would look at my bio of my life mm -hmm. and again i didn't write certainly the wikipedia i, I don't know where they come from but you look at it and you go, who is this guy? He's kind of interesting. Yeah, and you go, a lot to meet him. That's me? <laughs> Did I really do all those things? Because you forget, you, at least I do. I started this thing moving forward. Here's where I want to go. Here's what I'm interested in. So whatever happened is kind of gone. I'm done with that mm -hmm. now. That That's over. And and that was fun. But I, I, I'm always interested in the next thing. Right. You know, for comics, um, you know, you enjoy perhaps humor and you enjoy laughter, uh, and then you, it becomes your business and your job, and it's not the same. It loses that luster, at least it has for me, uh, and there, it only leaves you two things to excite you, the new material mm -hmm. and laughing at people that are bombing. Those are the two things that comics have left to enjoy, <laughs> and nothing is greater than watching somebody exactly. just eating it, especially if you know them. Right. Uh, but anyways, 
Um, so I was a professional sleight of hand artist. That's how I started. Listen, she just dropped her phone she in the middle of. Are you, you want to bring some professionals next well, time? Well, this is this is all I've got to work I, with. Is that it? Huh? This is it, okay. right? This is it. I'm all sorry. Right. Well, it. anyways, if we can mm. get her a helmet or something. Well, it's ADHD uh, medicine being uh, challenged. Okay. Well, it's clearly not. You know, we need some more potency. <laughs> can we up the dosage <laughs> for a little? Uh, I need more Lexapro, please. Drop a lot. Uh, so what were we talking about? Stunts. Stunts. What what was what were the stunts you did? I, I mean, don't know. Did you like jump the Grand Canyon on your motorcycle? That's, that's what did you do? No, if I did, did that, do? maybe I did that on my spare time I, for kicks. I want to know. Maybe for a grin. I want to know if there's something I can do as a stunt you that's going to elevate my career. Do you, do you, are you an old guy? How old are you? What do you consider old? Um, your age. Okay, 51. Oh, my Lord. Okay, <laughs> so you're not going to get any of my references. I'm a newcomer. Um... Do you remember Evil Knievel? Yes. Okay, do you remember when he tried to jump the, the Snake River? Well, I don't know if it was the actual Snake River. I just remember him but jumping. Do you remember he, in a, remember he was in a, in a rocket? We oh, watched him on Saturday. That spot. I visited that spot. They still have the ramp there, and you can go visit the it. The ramp is yeah, still there? Yeah, it's like in Idaho. Yeah. Anyways, I visited that. And he. I bring it up because he was a stuntman. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to make a full circle reference to stunts. Yes. And so I just wanted to let your viewers know and listeners that I understand what stunts mean. I just wanted to know if there are any videos of you doing these stunts. I would love to see these. Are you talking about the sideshow stuff? I just know that our wonderful Wikipedia source says that you did stunts. And I just wanted to know if there are videos. Did they mention what the stunts were? They did not. That's why I'm asking. Ah. Uh... So I I would, this is breaking news. So I'm going to reference what I think maybe it's talking about, and I don't know. Okay. Um, so I was a professional sleight of hand artist in Southern California in the 80s. Been up into the Magic Castle. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Uh, I was a professional. Some of the I've invented magic tricks. I'd ended up in literature for professional magicians. Some of the best magicians in the world are friends of mine. I grew up in Southern California with these guys. We'd all go doing what they called close-up magic at that time. So I'd be in a restaurant, and I would you'd be trying to mind your own business and eat, and I'd come up and say, you want to see a card trick? So I was that annoying guy. So it but sounds like this it. podcast. You were just minding your own business, and, and I just came up and said, what you're You said, saying? yeah, and it's very annoying mm -hmm. and very frustrating. Mm -hmm. And uh, you do learn martial arts for that reason, <laughs> uh, to defend yourself. But uh, anyways, I did that professionally, but my I have family that were in the carnival and still are. So in the 60s even. So they taught me uh, 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 carny talk. Uh, it's uh, their own language. And they were part of that. So I've always grown up in a very eclectic family. Uh, my grandmother played piano, I remember. Uh, she, I, think, I think I had an aunt that was in, uh, I forgot the name. It was like vaudeville. Anyways, uh, I had a cousin who was in film okay. uh, in the 50s and the 60s. He was on Donna Reed show and uh, uh, Dobie Gillis. These are stuff that might be way beyond uh, uh, Donna. Uh, anyways, so he was an actor. And uh, and my dad had uh, his own uh, little uh, co um, combo. Uh, he was a singer. And then he also did community theater. So I kind of, even though we were just, you know, Midwesterners or whatever, somehow showbiz was kind of in my DNA gotcha. in some odd way, even though we weren't in New York or L.A. or whatever. So I, I got into this magic thing, and be, but when I used to work in, and I did one year, one season with my uncle who was the Carney guy, and uh, feel free to walk in and out arbitrarily. <laughs> I hate it when people just sit still and run their buttons. I could have swore this was going to be a professional. No, podcast. no, my this bad. is my bad. Uh, this is my show. So it's, <laughs> indeed, it's not like your show. No, is, yeah, we're, we don't run it like your show. Yeah, well, if you've seen my show, you'll know that, that <laughs> there it goes. There it's is just, no wheels. Right, the wheels don't come off. Never had it. Never had any to start with. But I was into the sideshows. I was interested in the sideshows. You remember the sideshows? Mm -hmm. That was back when you could be super fat or super tattooed and get paid instead of it being your pastor. Right. <laughs> and so I found these people interesting. I just have always been very attracted to the freaks and the outliers and the mavericks. That's very interesting to me. The artists which is ironic because my comedy is known as being Christian and conservative, which people see as being sort of staid and myopic. And I see it as creative. And frankly, the new counterculture is to be clean, 
uh, Christian and a conservative. I the new Lenny Bruce mm -hmm. <laughs> is what I do because I'm the opposite of what they what they have decided is art, and I find that to be very bigoted and short sighted. Who are you to decide what art should be and what flavor it comes philosophically, especially? I love people that are just outside of the box. I just find them interesting and intriguing. So I decided if I'm going to do a comedy magic show, I was a magician, I said, I can't make anybody doing this close-up magic. It's what they call um, street magic. Now, David Blaine called it street magic. Have you ever heard of him? Yes. Well, that's the stuff I used to do. Okay. That close-up card stuff. Oh, my gosh. So I thought, well, I, I need to do comedy magic because then – because I was always funny when the way I did my magic. I said, well, what if I did comedy magic? Then I could go work in comedy clubs and make more money. So it was all about revenue stream. Gotcha. just trying to make a living. Yeah. I said, okay, so I need a show. How do I do this? But I wanted to have some really odd, instead of just doing a card trick, I thought, what if I could do some really interesting sideshow type stunts, fire eating, okay. stuff like that. So I learned to do all of that. So I uh, learned to swallow a sword. So I can swallow swords, I can eat fire, and my big famous thing was called nose floss, where I'd take string and suck it up my nose and then blow it out of my mouth and pull it through, all the way through. I did it on an MTV half-hour comedy hour. I did it on, I think, Showtime uh, Comedy Club Network. That was the first TV show uh, that I was on. So I just did these stunts, yes. I guess you would call them, as visual aids to be just weird and odd and mind-boggling for folks that's what i wanted to do so gotcha. that must be what they're referencing stunts and you could call them uh, sideshow stunts or freak show stuff or geek magic they used to call it there was a guy named harry anderson who was a, a comic <laughs> that uh referenced these things as well so that's the long way too long story and backstory for trying to find some place to land on the stunts, the stunts reference. The stunts. Which I think we found out really there was, there was no relation. There's really no yeah. stunts. So, so we spent did, 20 minutes yeah, describing the fact that you really, didn't, you, you, you really didn't do stunts. I don't know what, no. Stunt man I wanted to be at one point okay. when I was a little kid. Well, of course. I wanted to be James Bond. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, then he I never saw Cato and I wanted to learn how to nose. do karate. Not that we're aware of. He no, might I don't have done that in his spare time, but who doesn't? For for kicks. That's for it. kicks and giggles. Yeah, that or, you know, try to, you know, jump the Grand right. Canyon. When I was struggling with my mental health, one of the biggest obstacles I had to overcome was being willing to talk to someone. And for some of you, you may be in that same state where you don't want to leave your home. You don't trust anyone in your community that you can talk with. I want to introduce you to better help. They have licensed therapists that is able to take you and actually talk to you via Zoom so you can do it from the comfort of your own home. These are licensed therapists. You can talk about faith or you cannot talk about faith. It doesn't matter. They're going to have something specific just for you. If you would like to receive a 10% discount for your first initial call, all you got to do is check out BetterHelp in the show notes below. So whenever we talk about comedy, there's I, more. I thought there, that was the end. No, 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 okay. no, no. We've got to talk more now. Dang it. There was no studs. I thought I was there leaving. Was no studs. Well. That was my big close. I, there, was, there was no studs. All so right. now we got to start over. I just started doing comedy outside of COVID, and of course you were doing it before COVID. Mm. What was one of the biggest differences you've seen since the pandemic in the comedy world? Less coughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not so interrupted uh, with people um, um, dying right. right in front of me. It was horrific. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like a black plague. If you if you paid attention to COVID, it was maybe the most uh, devastating, um, heinous, uh, destructive uh, death uh, to to humanity that we have ever seen. I mean, if you remember, mm -hmm. people would you would just walk down the street and people would just keel over right. dead. Do you remember that? Two hundred million come out of that. Oh, it was just yeah. yeah. Two hundred million. Uh, Two hundred twenty million. Yeah. Uh, according to Pamela. Yeah. Uh, uh, Two hundred twenty million. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, but hopefully she'll be present because yeah. when you, and when you're that focused on your data, uh, you need to run the country. Right. As you can see with Joe Biden, he did the same thing. Uh, just a a a. a, a bear trap of intelligence and he just he's, he's still my inspiration to this day well i mean i i want to take as many vacations oh my lord oh uh, yeah and get paid for it Absolutely. yeah you know the only and he has to take that many because every time he takes one he forgets about it yeah <laughs>
But um, what were we talking about? And I'm sure it wasn't interesting. No, it wasn't. It was okay. just the difference between comedy today and comedy before oh, COVID. Oh, before COVID, comedy day. Yeah. So you never did it pre-COVID? Mm -mm. Okay. Never did. Okay, at that time we were funny. And could be. Yeah, we were allowed to be funny. Um, I think that the biggest, well, <laughs> the biggest initial issue was you weren't allowed to do comedy. Because what happened was if you were in a business where people had to sit next to each other, you were out of business. Mm-hmm. And so I immediately started getting, going to, uh, I was thinking, well, there there's states that aren't going to play this game. So I'm going to South Dakota's and I'm going to Iowa's, uh, Idaho's. I'm going, I'm going to the places where I know there's going to be warriors that are not going to put up with this and watch their constitutional rights be ripped away from them. And so um, that was the first problem, was it just finding places where you could go because the people weren't comfortable sitting next to each other. But I think... What we've learned more than anything, and COVID was uh, it had one redeeming factor, one beautiful, wonderful conclusion that we received from it. It revealed everything. Mm -hmm. It showed us everything. When the masks came on, the masks came off. Suddenly we realized, oh, we don't really control this country. We probably don't really vote and probably haven't for a long time. Oh, there is oligarchs out there that actually run the world. Oh, there is really uh, this desire to, for someone to take over this, na this nation or this, this world. The world economic form is real. Luciferianism and the mm -hmm. evil of Baal worship and so forth that has never ended, has never ended. Right. This is all real. And everything that I believed as a believer— uh, that I, if all the way through to Revelation that was telling us, here's how we're going to wrap it all up, by the way, it's coming true. And now we're seeing what's really fascinating to me is these sort of non-believers, Joe Rogan's, Peterson's, who are saying something's going on. They're seeing a spiritual realm that, th that they didn't even consider right. uh, suddenly being very real and very much, and, and, and as a Christ follower, I'm like, yeah, we've been kind of telling you about this for quite exactly. some time. So just to let you know, you're just catching up. Mm -hmm. I think what COVID also did is it began that putting the advice on free speech clearly. Mm -hmm. A doctor would come on and say, you know, by the way, I do uh, uh, this professionally uh, when it comes to viruses. Mm -hmm. This isn't the way you handle this. You need right. to kind of let people get the herd, human, uh, herd immunity. We really need to... this. This uh, the vaccine isn't tested. This isn't ivermectin. By the way, been doing it for a long time. This will work. This will. Work. And I just said this on my podcast yesterday. I said, you know, one thing I've I've learned is uh, if you're forbidden to talk about it on social media, it's probably true. For example, election stolen. Mm -hmm. Can I even talk about it? No. Then it's then it happened. Right. Uh, ivermectin is a good thing. Man, I know you can't talk about. It. Oh, then it is a good thing. Yeah. So that's been a real eye opener. But comedy before COVID was no different than anything before COVID. We were living in an illusion, in a facade that we're free, that we actually have agency and autonomy, that this nation is built on a republic where the people rule and vote for those to bring their sacred vote into the house to continue to allow us to choose how we want to live as, uh, as Americans. That is seriously been put on the brakes have been put on. Right. And we really have seen, you know, this acceleration of, of, of throttling comedy even to be able to joke about anything. Mm -hmm. You know, there. I don't believe that there is anything you can't joke about. Anything. Right. Now, I'm a Christ follower. I don't curse. I've been doing comedy 30 years or more. Uh, I've never, I don't use curse words. I don't use gratuitous sexual, everything that has become the, status quo now is comedy never did anything because to me the creativity was more interesting mm -hmm. how i don't get to say the f word i don't get to say the sex jokes these easy things i don't get that by self-imposed discipline because i don't want to use that in my nomenclature so what i'm going to do instead is say can i get creative can i find another way to use the f word without using it in other words get that impact that power because words are powerful right. and they're sacred and they're necessary, they're my livelihood. So I want access to all of them. And so, um, it, you know, I think, again, we just saw them just really clamping down on even being able to joke about stuff because that helps get you through mm -hmm. the pain, right? I mean, who's who has been historically one of the greatest uh, distributors of comedy throughout history as a people? Jews. 
Mm-hmm. We'll talk about people that needed to right, laugh. Right, right. Uh, because they're the most historically documented persecuted people group in human history. And so they learned that laughter is a great way to try to take some of the steam out of the pain, find the joy in, in the midst of the sorrow. And so uh, I think that's where comedy is necessary. Mm-hmm. If your comedy is a means to do something more significant. Listen, my style of comedy is not safe. Not in, And I'm mainly, my fan base is Christians and conservative folks. So these are people that don't want cursing. Mm-hmm. They want stuff clean. They want to be able to bring their five-year-old. Right. Don't ask me why Christians think that children belong everywhere. I don't get it. <laughs> they don't. For God's sake. That's why we have church that nurseries. They, that's why we have nurseries or babysitters. <laughs> yes. But anyways, um, people can bring their kids and they actually laugh at some of my stuff. I don't get it. My point is that there are great comics out there who all they want to do is be funny. Mm -hmm. They don't have any political agenda. They try to be very, so obviously I'm talking about Brian Reagan. I'm Reagan. I'm talking about Gaffigan. I'm talking about uh, now Nate Bargatze blew up, uh, uh, Seinfeld even for the most part. They just want to be funny. God bless them. I wish I could have just been that guy. Mm -hmm. But I had things to say. I said that I see my culture. I see my country. I see the world as it is. And I have to discuss it. I don't know why, but I would I would work in churches when that started, and I started saying these other things, and people would get very quiet and very sort of a poignant, um, and they would be touched by. And I go tell my wife, I don't know what this means, but I think I'm supposed to be in ministry. Like there's something happening here that's much deeper than the the laughter, and and yet I feel like that's who I am, who I am, and so um, I realized that. The Judeo-Christian ethic was my social commentary that I was inculcating into my through line of my comedy. So I'm not of the ilk of the uh, pre-forementioned guys. I'm in the George Carlin, Lenny Bruce, Mm -hmm. Richard Pryor, Chris Rock uh, format. I have something else to say that matters to me. And since God made it very clear to me that my gift isn't comedy. My gift is communication gotcha. and comedy is the flavor. So that's how I ended up where I am today. And I think it's even more important that you are fearless as a comic and you say anything you feel is funny uh, to stand for the ability for comics to be free. We are the we are the ones historically that can make fun of the king, not get our head cut off. We are necessary to culture. We're the ones that make the monarchy and the peasantry inequality. We are crucial, but more importantly, we sort of take the wind out of the sails of the technocrats and the oligarchs and those, the elites who have decided who's allowed to speak freely. And you don't get to mock us. I said you were the ones right. that most need to be mocked and ridiculed especially those who consider themselves off limits, oh, then you're going to get double dose. Exactly. And that's the way I play. So my new album that I'm getting ready to put out called Laugh While It's Legal is going to those issues because that's what I believe I'm here on earth to talk about. And yet in the midst of it was my real agenda to stand for free speech and to encourage and inspire others to say either you, especially as a Christian, if you are not speaking truth, because it will offend people. You're a, you're an embarrassment Christianity. You're an insult to Jesus Christ, and you are a, 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 an incredible coward as a Christian because you're necessary to explain to people what's at stake. And if you don't tell them what's at stake, I don't know that you even believe what you think you say you mm. do, or you would let them know there is a consequence for ignoring That's Christ's strong. sacrifice. That's strong. It's, it's what Christianity was supposed to be. Why? Because we were never called to be Christians. How do you deal with the backlash from the Christian people? First off, most people that watch me love what I do. Mm-hmm. So the backlash, you said you said two things. Backlash from the Christian people, and that's where I would stop you and say, my gut is we're not talking about Christians. We're talking about legalists mm. and Pharisees and Sadducees. You know, there's a very frightening uh, scripture that says there will come a day when people stand in front of the living God and say, let me tell you all the great things we did in your name. Mm. And he'll say, yeah, by the way, why do you use my name? You're not mine. 
Now, can you think of a more horrifying moment in, in, you, in your existence? Not the people going to hell. I mean, they kind of think it's cool to do that anyway. Oh, I'll just go party in hell and whatever. And of course, they won't. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be horrifying. But they kind of probably will realize, I chose this. I guess I'm an idiot. But okay. But what about the guy that said, I did, I did it all in Jesus. You know, I shut down my church. Right. Because I felt like that's what God would want me to do to be a good citizen. I wouldn't tell people that their behavior is sinful because I wanted them to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. These are the people that will stand in front of God and say, just wanted to let you know what I did in your name. And he said, and you know what? I got this from Dennis Prager. One of the Ten Commandments is you will not take the Lord's name in vain. Now, we all grew up, to, if you grew up in the church, that means you don't use his name as a curse word. Right. And that would be blasphemous or at least uh, irreverent and, and, and so forth. Uh, so I can see that. But that's not what it means. The actual Hebrew is you don't carry his name in vain. In other words, you don't, you don't ascribe to his name that which is not of his. So you don't say, uh, uh, God says mm -hmm. steal. God says uh, live with this woman, but you're not married and have sex with as many women you get, and then say God ordains this. Yeah. That is carrying his name in vain. You are applying to God what is not of him. Wow. So that's what these guys are doing, is they're saying uh, they're, they're ascribing to God's name. A secular man comes up to you and says to you, Pastor, your church is unessential. And you say, okay. Mm. There's a special depth of hell for cowards. Because what worse could you, what worse thing could you be called than a coward for Christ? Wow. What, what's worse? Judas, Peter, one repented, one didn't. And so uh, I think it's very important that you understand, especially in this day and age, that that cowardice. Christianity in America never cost us anything. Never cost us anything. So it ended up costing us everything. Mm -hmm. Where the church has always grown and flourished is during persecution because people that claim to be a Christ follower where it costs you, guess what? You're serious. Yeah. Filters You're out. all in. Mm -hmm. If you, where ours is, close your eyes, bow your head. Nobody's looking because we don't want to embarrass mm -hmm. you. You're about to accept Christ as your Savior who gave all. God died for you. But listen, we don't embarrass you. They're not going to stand. No. And they shouldn't. Jesus went up to guys on a boat with his their dad working. Hey, get out of the boat and come follow me. Do you don't think their dad was going? To, uh, what? What? <laughs> exactly. Well, well, wait. No, we got. How are we going to pay the bills? Wait a minute. We yeah. got some nets to throw and mend. Well, show me anywhere in the scripture where Jesus went up and said, "Listen, I, I want. Let's just do this secretly." Yeah. He said, if you don't have the courage to stand for me in, in, in front of people who already believe, how are you going to handle those who hate you? That's so good. And by the way. That's part of the definition of proof that you're one of us. Do they hate you for Jesus' name? No, I want to make sure everybody loved me right. for Jesus' name. Oh, well, that kind of means you aren't one of us. What do you mean? Because Jesus said, if they hate you, they hated me first. We were called to be disciples, not Christians. And disciples is a discipline, and discipline is hard, and it's why most people in America aren't Christians. Mm -hmm. They're churchgoers. So that's what I've been called to do. I didn't choose this. I didn't ask to be this. I wanted to be comic. That's all I wanted to do. And I couldn't. This stuff would come out of my mouth. I go, why don't you just shut up and be funny, man? Why do you just, <laughs> what's wrong with you? And I didn't know. Yeah. But uh, then I realized, and God made it clear, and it, it is that uh, because I've given you a prophetic anointing, mm. uh, and all that means, so you don't think I'm some off the wall guy, it just simply means to say hard things. That's what the prophets did. They were the ones that would kind of say the hard things, and they were freaks, and you go out to the wilderness and watch them. This guy's eating bugs. you, you got to see this guy. So you have that anointing, and it, the Bible says that. Some people are prof prophets, and some are preachers, and some are teachers. That's all it is. I'm not Joseph. I can't read your dream. I'm just saying 
you're saying a hard thing that others aren't saying. It's a different style of delivery system than a pastor who has to be more temp... Uh, a shepherding. Yeah, a because shepherding there's, voice. he's getting all these crazy people right. that he has to try to help navigate because they're, most of them are babies drinking milk. He's got to be careful with them. So that's a different annoying. I couldn't do that. I'd shoot them all. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't see you as a nah, pastor. Nah, I don't, don't be a good I don't, I, I, no, I don't see you. I'd as a be pastor. a congregation of one guy. Yeah, I don't he, see. He'd be drunk. I don't so know that I want you coming to visit me when I'm in the hospital. No, I don't. I don't think I want. You I would. I just over say me. get it over yeah, with. I don't know that There's I. There's people here that could use that bed. I've got a line plugged into me. I don't know that exactly. I want you having access to that. Amen. So you got a podcast. What about it? And you're sharing this kind of teachings. I am. You're speaking out. It's called Brad Stein has issues. <clears throat> clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also have some interesting guests. And Is that creatively thought of or prophetically thought of? It's both. <laughs> it's, everything. it's everything. It's all inclusive. I didn't write. I'll give credit where credit's true. Uh, that was that name was given me by a, a comedian friend of mine named uh, Thor Ramsey. I don't know mm -hmm. if you ever heard of him. But uh, I kind of came up with it. Matter of fact, the first time I ever met Thor, he wasn't a Christian. And I witnessed him for like a week. Uh, he was very dirty, actually. Uh, and uh, he would ask me questions like, uh, "Why, you know, how can you be a Christian and be in these nightclubs?" I was we were working the Funny Bone in Iowa, and I was a headliner. He was a opening act. Anyways, years later, I come to find out he became became a believer and then became a Christian comic. Anyways, but he, him, and I actually just co-wrote a s screenplay that's about to be filmed in Gatlinburg here. We, that's why I'm doing this because I'm playing one of the characters, so I'm getting prepared for that. But um, He's the one that came up with this idea of, of Brad Stein has issues because I was doing these little rants in California. Matter of fact, a guy wanted to see if we could monetize it. And all I would do is like a 10 minute rant and we didn't know how to do it. And we eventually gave up on it. But I said, it's a great title though. I'm going to use this for my podcast. I started the podcast because of Corona. I had nothing to do. Mm -hmm. I was just bored. So I literally sat in my laptop and said, I've never done this face to Facebook live. Does this work? I don't know what I'm doing because I'm old. <laughs> so everything is like reverse engineering for me. So I go click. Hello. Uh, it's me. I don't know. Does anybody like what I do? You know, you watch the people. It's 30 people. Three people watch it. 40, 200, 300. So like, what? Mm -hmm. Is this real? Uh, this is weird. So um, I just kind of stumbled into it. Uh, and then I thought, well, if I'm going to do this, I might as well have a good camera and I need a better mic. I, mean, right. I might as well do it. And, and people started donating. And <clears throat> I am a 501c3. I'm a ministry now, but God's Comic Ministry. God's Comic was the name given to me by the New Yorker magazine. I didn't give that to myself, just so you guys don't think I'm that full of myself. <laughs> uh, and um, it just um, it just grew exponentially. And then uh, and then I started getting guests. And, and, yeah. and it's been a great great thing for me because these people that I've always interested in that I wanted to talk to and now I get a chance to do that so it's really and then Salem just picked it up so I'm now I'm on the Salem network Come on. Uh, yeah so anyways it's my ministry and it's whatever God has for me I'm not for everybody I don't want to be for everybody I'm for those who are all in who want to really be disciples you can go to bradstein.com and join the militia of the mind uh, where we're going to out think and I'll pray and out fast these people and you can also join the Mighty 10,000, which is $3 a month if you want to join and get some all my comedy on uh, the Internet and also special guest interviews that uh, that are not on the regular thing. So it's a way for me to grow it and try to turn it into something that God might have for it. But the ultimate thing is I'm trying to inspire people to be unapologetic about what it means to be a Christian. But because of my unorthodox style <laughs> that God chose to use. Yeah. Like a John the Baptist -y thing. Um, I think it it's interesting to people. I'm a Christian that is not of the ilk that they're used to and that is interesting to people. So that's why I did it. I didn't know I didn't want to do it. I wanted to be comic is too much pressure. Uh, but you you're not allowed to be anything but what God has demanded of you if you're a true believer. That is so and good. So here I sit. Um, but listen, I don't normally give this kind of insight to people without getting paid. So I do expect something on the you way will, out. You I, will. I want I, some swag. It's, it is being I want, sent to you. I mean serious swag. It, it's I'm being sent about, to you. You know, we're going to wrap your car. We're going to wrap your car with would my you? face. Um, would you? It's yeah. got my and podcast. Can we your podcast? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be promoted. Promote no, no, don't promote your podcast. I'm here you for you. Remain I'm humble. here all, It's all about you. My podcast. What was your name again? Yeah. 
because I want to continue to promote you. Yeah, you, everywhere you need I to. go, everywhere, because that's your calling. Well, that's what that's I'm spiritual. To do. It's spiritual. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. You're welcome. I'm, I'm shocked I did it. I normally don't I do know. things like I'm, this. I'm really. I don't shocked. have time with it, but my valet needed to get out. He and the fact that you stayed program. this long. How long has it been? I know. It's been like 14 hours. I thought, this isn't right. You know, I feel like I've been manipulated. You, Can I talk you, to this camera? Been, yeah, sure. Folks, if you're calling in, call in now. It's a 1-800. <laughs> uh, I've Give been ripped off. Give a lot. But anyways, thanks for having me. Absolutely. I wish you well in your career. And just keep it up, man, uh, because uh, clearly my career's in the tank. So <laughs> somebody's got to fill in the gap. Somebody's got to entertain it's the same. It's a big vacuum and somebody's got to <laughs> fill it in. Anyways. Brad Stein, everybody. Thank I, you so I much. I did my best. Good to meet you. Appreciate you, man. Okay. That was a weird handshake. Well, I was Very re- fishy. Well, it's kind of- oh, okay. We couldn't reach. I, I was short he arms. says that now, but short it's because arms. he's a wuss. <laughs>